What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. Wow, it's been a busy two weeks. It's been uh, a lot going on since the last time I did an Ask Abby episode, and that was not that long ago. But I've been making progress on all the writing projects, all the things, um, the audiobook, editing projects. Things are still like up in the air as far as what I'm publishing next, so I'm working on that. And in my free time, I've been writing my new book, which is over 115,000 words now. <laughs> and it's nowhere near done, so there's that. I've also been spending a lot of time in the studio recording my audiobook for 100 Days of Sunlight. If you didn't see my behind the scenes video vlog thing about that, you can check it out right there. Um, so that has been, that's been exciting and I don't have a release date yet for you guys, but it's coming soon, I promise. Release date announcement is coming soon. For now, comment below and tell me what are you working on at the moment? Tell me about your writing projects. How is it coming along? How many words have you written so far? And how long do you think your writing project is gonna be? Because I feel like I'm predicting mine will be this new novel. I think it will be like probably at least 150,000 words. Whatever. <laughs> okay, that's enough blabbering from me. Let's get into today's questions. I'm super excited. There are really good questions here today. Roll that intro. And let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and don't know how this works, here's the deal. You post your writing questions in the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group. Hashtag it, ask Abby, and every other week, pretty much, I show up here on YouTube to answer those questions. I pick three or four questions each time to get inside this secret Facebook group with a bunch of other awesome writers like yourself. It's become an awesome little close-knit community of about 200 people now, so it's, it's really cool. Head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Ammons. Okay. Let's get into the questions, shall we? This first question is from Grace. Hi, question for Ask Abby or anyone else who can help. I'm currently writing the midpoint of my story and want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. The midpoint that I'm working on falls within the main plot that follows my protagonist, but I also have a smaller plot that follows my slew of supporting characters. I know that each of my supporting characters represent their own kind of subplot through their character arc, but this smaller plot is a bigger event that they are all part of that parallels what is happening in the main plot with my protagonist. The smaller plot and the main plot will finally collide in the climax and the two different plots will reveal how they were related, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My question is one, does the midpoint slash plot twist have to happen in one singular moment or chapter, or can I spread it over two or three chapters? And two, does the smaller plot have to also have a midpoint that happens at the same time as the midpoint in the main plot? Does my smaller plot even have to follow the three-act structure if it's as much shorter, shorter plots already unfolding? First question first. No, it does not have to be one chapter. It, it can be whatever it needs to be. So I try to give myself like kind of creative freedom when it comes to how long I'm making a particular plot point. With certain things like with the inciting incident, you want it to happen quickly, obviously. Um, not the thing itself, but you want it to happen soon, I should say. You want it to happen right away or as soon as possible. Um, as soon as you introduce, introduce the main character's conflict, we know what's important to them, what would matter to them, what would push them outside their comfort zone. Lines of the comfort zone have to be drawn, of course, and then you push them outside their comfort zone as soon as possible. However, how long the inciting incident lasts is up for debate. I mean, some people would say if you're following, okay, so I'm all over the place, sorry. How long should your plot twist last, right? Was that the main, the game changing midpoint? The plot twist midpoint, yeah. Is it a singular moment or chapter? Or could you spread it over two or three chapters? Yes, you can absolutely spread it over two or three chapters, however long it needs to last. Um, it obviously is not gonna last a long time because it is a, moment. It's like a revelation. It's something's changing. The game is changing. 
But however long it takes to explain that, take your time because it will completely fall flat and nobody will understand what's going on if you rush through it and, and leave out information that's important for us to know. Remember that the reader sees everything happening at the pace at which they read. That's like the golden rule, my rule of thumb to pacing. And of course, get feedback afterwards and ask your readers, did that happen too quickly? Did that happen too slowly? Did you understand everything that was happening? Okay, so the second part of your question is um, about your subplots, your, your smaller plot. That's really your subplot. And how I like to describe subplots is all subplots really are is the plot of side characters, right? Most likely your sub characters plot will not be following the three act story structure, at least not in the same flow as your main character's plot. Okay, unless you're like doing a dual protagonist thing, which it doesn't sound like you are, it sounds like it's just a subplot with your side characters. There is, go there are going to be plot points happening and you might even recognize some of them from the three act story structure. There will be plot points happening to your sub characters with their subplot, but don't expect it to fall exactly in line with the three act story structure because it probably won't and it's probably better in most cases that it doesn't because the main character's plot is the one that you really want the reader to be focusing on. If it becomes like there's three different stories happening here and they're all kind of following the same story structure and we kind of give importance to all of them then it's no longer a subplot, okay? It's like you're following a bunch of different people and that can get confusing and make you feel detached and like you don't know who you should really care about therefore you care about nobody so tread carefully if you if you decide to do that but that's a whole other <laughs> video for another time that's a whole other type of storytelling where the main character's plot serves the story structure the side character's plot should serve the main character's plot that makes sense. Because in the end, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to not steal the show of the main characters, okay? You want your supporting characters to be supporting, yes, and you want them to have their own transformative journeys, their own character arcs, maybe, or positive character arcs, negative character arcs, or maybe they don't change at all. And that can be a theme in and of itself but you don't want them stealing the show from the main character. Definitely check out my video on subplots and I also have one on side characters, but the subplots, yeah, actually both of them, both of them, <laughs> check out both of them. If they're not up there, they'll be linked down below in the description. Okay, next question is from Sydney. So this might be kind of an odd question, but as a self-published author and a YouTube creator, you're the best person to answer it. YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> YouTube creators often talk about the algorithm and say things like, don't demonize me, YouTube. I hear a lot of fellow self-published authors, particularly in Amazon exclusive romance authors about also being at the mercy of their platform. They say things like, ugh, Amazon changed the algorithm. Now I have to figure out keywords all over again. And well, I've been dungeoned again. So here's the question. How much does the platforms you use to get your story out there, change the way people can find your story. Do you have any recommendations for staying true to the truth you want to shout from the rooftops while navigating the stairs on the platform to even find the roof? <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. Um, this is a great question, actually very timely because so many of these questions, so many of that, so much of that question, um, you'll find answers to and more just so much information, it's awesome. In the latest episode of the podcast that me and my sister did, we interviewed Dave Chesson of kindlepreneur.com. You guys may have heard of him. He is a book marketing guru and it was so awesome to interview him and talk about the back end of Amazon and the Kindle store and how to beat the algorithm, so to speak, and understand what's going on in these search engines, what's going on in the back end of Amazon that shows your books to your readers. So a lot of indie authors get disheartened because you publish your book, you put it out there, you think you used all the right keywords and you think you used all the right uh, words in your blurb, your description and your categories and all of that. And it seems the algorithm just doesn't like you. <laughs> They're not showing your book to your potential readers. They're not showing it in search engines results. It's not showing up in the places that you thought it was gonna show up in. There is a method to this madness, okay? There's a science behind how this works. Of course, the platform is designed with this intelligent 
algorithm and it's designed in a specific way that you can essentially I don't want to say hack, but figure out how to work within, <laughs> figure out the back end and what's actually happening with keywords and all of that. I mean, I, I'm still learning about it myself, but so, so much of it is divulged <laughs> in that interview. So definitely check out that interview. A lot of you probably already saw it, but I totally 10, 10 recommend checking it out. Check out Dave's um, free course on Amazon ads will be really helpful to you as well. And the Publisher Rocket software, which helps you to navigate the back end of Amazon and figure out what keywords you should be using in your ads and also in your categorization of your book. There's all kinds of things you can also do for free. So check that out. All of that is linked below and also in the corner, the interview. Check all of that out. It's so much to talk about here in this Ask Gabby video that I don't wanna go into all of it right now, but those are some resources that you will find invaluable. And the cool thing is you don't have to alter what your book is about. You don't have to specifically write for the market and jeopardize your creativity. Absolutely not. You should just follow your creativity, follow your inspiration, write the book that you wanna write, tell the truth that you want to tell, write the books and the stories and whatever you're doing with the themes that you are passionate about, okay? That matters so much. It has to matter to you before it can matter to anybody else. And the cool thing is you can find a way to sell that. There is a way to get in front of your readers. Okay, last question is from Danielle. Lately, as I've been getting more and more ideas for some stories, I've been thinking of the characters I feel would be involved. I want to know if it's unheard of using main characters from one story as secondary characters in another, if it all happens to be, if they all happen to be a part of the same universe. This is a great question, and I feel like I've gotten this question a few times now. Um, yes, absolutely. It's not unheard of, but I've seen it done several times. I've read several books that it's like, oh, that's the character from this book. That was the main character, and they just like kind of walk by, or they're in a couple of scenes. And I've actually done that. It's called companion novels, I think, is like the the technical term is a, or a companion story. So you're taking a side character or... Um, just a supporting character from the first book and making them the main character of a different book. Totally different stories, they're in the same universe and they can be sold separately. So it's not like you have to read one book to understand the concept of the other book, okay? This can also be a really cool marketing technique, okay? So if you're an indie author or if you're planning to self-publish your books, you can take some characters from one story and write a story about them doesn't have to be a long story, it could be a novella, it could be a short story. And sell that or use that as a lead magnet to get email subscribers. And you can use it for all kinds of things, but relating those two things and being like, hey, I have this extra thing that's about these characters. Now that you've already read this first book and fall in love with the side characters, like how many, how many, okay, how many people have you met that love side characters more than the main character of a book? Like they, they, are in love with the side characters and they didn't really care for the main characters or they did but they love the side characters more or the sidekick more i'm one of those people you're probably one of those people there's probably some story out there that you can think of some book some novel where you just loved one of those side characters right you love them even more than the main character you would have read a whole book about the side character well there you go there are just so many things you could do. The sky's the limit. So definitely play around with that, especially if you find yourself really attracted to a particular side character. Chances are your readers are gonna be really in love with them too. Okay guys, awesome questions as always. I hope you got something good out of my replies. If you would like your question answered here on YouTube, you know what to do. Head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Facebook group. It's an awesome close-knit community of writers just like you. I'm in there all the time. We're always chatting about stories and bouncing ideas off each other. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll love it. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. To get inside this secret Facebook group, which has become just an awesome community, over 200,000, <laughs> 200,000, wow. Someday, someday it will be 200,000. Right now it's just 200. I feel like I cannot keep my eyes open. <laughs>